Think your weather app's reliable enough to warn you of a sudden storm? Well, after 34 years of hiking Tasmania's toughest trails, I've learned you just can't trust technology alone. You need natural indicators too. So in this video, I'm gonna show you simple and safe techniques to quickly read clouds, wind shifts, and terrain, giving you clearer predictions, smarter gear decisions, and safer hikes. So let's start with one weather cue a lot of people don't pay attention to, but it can completely change your choice of gear. Cloud signals, your first line of defense. Before the rain starts, the sky gives away clues. You just have to know how to read them right. On a recent summer hike here in Tasmania, we'd enjoyed two glorious days of clear skies. But on the morning of day three, we woke up to a thick blanket of grey clouds. What weather experts would call autostratus or stratocumulus crowd. Clouds, not crowds, clouds. Anyway, these stratocumulus, they stretched right across the sky. There was also a bit of a gentle breeze that was absent the day before. It sort of rustled around us now, just a little bit of breeze just blowing through. We immediately knew that the weather was shifting. With a peak decline that morning, we packed up early and moved quickly. Sure enough, just as we began our descent off the mountain, the rain arrived. It was only a light shower, but enough to confirm we'd made the right call. We avoided getting really wet. And we also avoided a slippery scramble on a tricky summit. Clouds are nature's early warning system. Subtle, reliable, and something that shouldn't be overlooked. Learn to read their signals and you can predict the weather shifts hours in advance. Sometimes even before the forecast catches up, if you can even get a forecast, because a lot of the time you don't have phone signal. Here's exactly what to look for the next time you're staring up at the sky. Firstly, you've got your cumulus clouds. These are your classic cotton ball sort of clouds. Puffy, bright, white, and usually harmless. But watch them carefully. If they start building upward and darkening underneath, that's potentially a storm sort of rising. Trouble might be on the way. Next, you've got your autocumulus and autostratus clouds. These are mid-level clouds, and they're pretty important. Autostratus clouds appear as a gray sheet blanketing the sky, sometimes with the sun faintly glowing behind it. Alto cumulus look like small sort of dappled patches, often described as fish scales or a mackerel sky. Spotting these types of clouds usually means bad weather could be roughly six to 12 hours away. Just enough time to reconsider your route, your campsite, and what you're planning on. But this can vary a bit based on atmospheric conditions. Next, you've got cirrus clouds. These are like high, delicate strands. They're like thin, white scratches across the blue sky. And these will often appear a full day before a weather front is coming. If they thicken into a hazy layer called cirrostratus, rain is almost certainly on its way. It's time to rethink your layers, your route choices, what you're planning on doing. And next you've got your cumulonimbus or your nimbus clouds. These are the big ones. They're massive, towering dark bottom clouds with distinctive sort of anvil shaped tops on the top. Funnily enough. Spotting these means there's probably heavy rain, strong winds, and maybe even lightning on the way. If you see them, it's maybe time to think about getting ready to sort of set up camp or get off any exposed terrain. Now, don't worry if you can't remember every type of cloud right away. The key is to just start noticing patterns. The more you look up, the more you'll see. And soon you'll be predicting weather like second nature. But clouds aren't the only clue that nature provides. There's another invisible signal, and it's one that a lot of people forget about entirely. And it can give you up to 12 hours of advance warning. Barometric pressure, the invisible forecast. If clouds are your visual cue, barometric pressure is your invisible guide. You can't see it, but it quietly reveals what's building beyond the horizon. Think of barometric or air pressure as the atmosphere's current mood. High pressure, weather's chilled out, stable, clear, predictable. The pressure's dropping, then things could turn moody, volatile, and you're likely gonna be facing a bit of wind, rain, or maybe worse. I've been keeping an eye on sort of barometric pressure readings on hikes for well over a decade now, usually just off my trusty watch. But here's the key, a single reading alone doesn't tell you too much. What really matters is the trend. Is it steady, is it rising, or is the pressure dropping? This trend is what truly makes the difference between getting caught out and staying one step ahead. How to read pressure trends. If the pressure's steady or rising, then that's good news. Weather's likely stable or improving. If it's falling gradually, then possible change is coming, so expect cooler temperatures or even light rain. If the pressure is dropping fast, then that's likely a red flag. Rain, wind, or a storm front is likely inbound. You don't need really fancy gear. Many outdoor watches today have built-in barometers, often combined with an altimeter and a compass. And my first one was well over a decade ago. I had a Sunto watch, I think, and that's all it sort of had. The only thing is to remember to calibrate your watch occasionally, especially in, when you're gaining elevation. This will help keep the readings as accurate as possible. But 
even when the pressure is holding steady, there is another powerful force shaping the weather in real time as you move across the landscape. That is the wind. And understanding wind, how it behaves, how it interacts with the terrain and what it signals unlocks a whole new level of weather awareness and preparedness. Wind direction and terrain, predicting localized weather. Now, wind isn't always just a gentle breeze, it's the weather system in motion. In alpine terrain especially, wind doesn't simply pass through the landscape, it helps shape it. Mountains redirect gusts, trap clouds, and create entirely new weather systems in minutes. Think of wind as a messenger. It carries the atmosphere's mood across the valleys, over the ridgelines, and straight into your face. And in places here like Tassie, Tasmania, right in the middle of the roaring 40s, that message rarely arrives quietly. If you're anything like me, wind is one of the first things you tune into while you're hiking. In Tasmania, we're constantly dealing with air that's been racing around the bottom of the globe across the Southern Ocean, and it hits fast, it shifts quickly, and it almost always signals something is on the way. A couple of years back, I was hiking on Tasmania's Western Arthur Range on an eight day trip through this just spectacular wild country. The forecast before we left, the day before we left, and the day before we left, and the day we left, was for promising calm and clear conditions for the next few days. And sure enough, day one delivered the goods. But early on day two, we woke up to that familiar gray stratocumulus cloud. Within half an hour of setting out that day, we started to feel a gentle breeze, it began to stir. By mid morning, that breeze had become a stiff wind. We stopped for lunch, putting on our wet weather gear as a precaution, and right as we packed up for lunch, the rain arrived. On and off showers followed us for the rest of the day. This is your classic Tasmanian microclimate. Just a few kilometers away, we had friends camping on another range, sitting in warm sunshine all day. But the Arthurs, as usual, had their own plans for us. The takeaway, well, Next time you're hiking, pay attention to wind shifts, especially when they pick up quickly or change direction. Wind is your early warning messenger, alerting you to weather shifts often long before they reach you. Learning how to read its cues can be the difference between a comfortable hike and getting caught off guard altogether. How to use wind to read the terrain. When you're hiking in an area, you kind of want to know the dominant wind patterns in that area. In Tasmania, for instance, Westerly winds often signal incoming cold fronts, and it's sort of the prevailing wind here in Tasmania and Southern Australia. Understanding your region's typical wind directions help you anticipate weather shifts, even when the sky looks clear. Before you head out, you can use simple forecasting tools as well in conjunction with this. Apps like Windy or the Bureau of Meteorology's Wind Maps can show you wind shifts and pressure systems well before you even set foot on a walk, but more about them in a moment. Tune into real-time wind changes. If the breeze suddenly picks up strength, shifts direction, or begins to feel colder and damper, it is a clear sign that something is going on and the weather is changing. Usually that means a front is moving in or a weather system is building nearby. Pause and have a think about the situation and what you're gonna do. When wind signals a shift, ask yourself, are you exposed? Can you safely drop in elevation? Do you need to layer up, seek shelter, or adjust your route? Or are you just gonna keep going along? Use the terrain to your advantage. Remember, windward slopes, the sides facing the wind, are typically cooler, wetter, and cloudier. Leeward slopes, they're the sheltered sides of you know a ridge or a peak facing away from the wind. And these will tend to be warmer, drier, and calmer. Knowing which side you're on helps predict weather changes before they hit you. On that Western Arthurs hike, noticing the wind strengthening from the west gave us just enough time to layer up and prepare for incoming rain. So we've covered clouds, pressure, and wind, but none of these matter if you're hiking during fire season and you overlook one critical factor that could shut down your entire route. Bushfire risk, the factor you can't ignore. Here in Tassie, like many other parts of Australia, we're no strangers to brutal bushfires. During summer especially, Planning isn't just about weather, it's about managing risk, and fire danger is one of the biggest. Over the years, I've had to cancel multiple trips due to fires blocking access or threatening safety, or just being in the general region, and you're still allowed to go there, but I thought I'd better change my plans. Even when the weather looks perfect where you are, fire conditions in remote areas can deteriorate rapidly, leaving you cut off, forced to reroute, or scrapping your entire plan altogether. That's why I never rely just on one forecast. Now, it is great to have all these weather reading skills, but I use them as part of an all-encompassing sort of weather system. And I've built a small toolkit of apps and resources I check before every hike, particularly during high risk periods. And even when I'm out on a walk, whenever I get a brief moment of phone reception, which is pretty rare here, 
I'll usually do a quick update of each of these apps and just check what's going on. The tools I use for forecasting. So the first one I use is one called cloudforecast.com. It's great for quickly visualizing cloud cover and sky conditions of where you're heading to. And it gives you sort of advanced look at what the sky is potentially gonna be doing when you're out on a hike. And I find this really handy when I'm planning night photography as well. If I wanna go and get some star trails and that sort of thing, it's fantastic to see if there's gonna be any cloud cover, as well as on day walks. If there's gonna be sort of rain and stuff in the region, I always have a look at cloud forecast before I go. It'll show me a couple of days in advance and a day in advance and a few hours in advance. And it's just a tool that I use all the time. Another one I use is Windy. Now that is an app as well as a website and that has really awesome sort of visualizations of the weather. And you can literally see where the weather system are moving in. You can see the wind direction, the speed, the pressure, precipitation, and it's all presented sort of clearly on an interactive map. And it's just good to give you an idea of any potentially incoming fronts that are gonna come when you're out on the track. You can check before you go and just see if there's anything on the way. Next, we've got Mountain Forecast, and that is a recent favorite of mine. I even upgraded to the paid version last year to give me longer range forecasts when I'm heading out on hikes. It seems to be like an AI driven back-end bit of software, and I've just found it to be impressively accurate, especially in complex terrain here in Tasmania. It will give you sort of temperatures and, and predictions on conditions at, a, at certain altitudes. It's really useful. I quite enjoy that app, and it's something I'll probably continue to subscribe to. Next one, we've got YR.no, and that's like the Norwegian weather service, I think. It's just a clean, reliable, straightforward app to use for weather prediction. I've used it for a couple of years now, and it uh, often sort of matches the conditions that I'm experiencing. The forecasts I get from that are pretty close. It's like that with mountain forecast, I think are the two really good ones to use. Then you've got the BOM, Bureau of Meteorology here in Australia. Uh, and this is sort of the gold standard in Australia. So I regularly check that as well. I check my weather warnings there, fire danger ratings, and occasionally use their thing called MetEye, which is maps giving forecasting sort of tools as well. That is a good one to check as well. Now, you don't need to master all of these tools at once. Start by choosing one or two you like, get comfortable with them, and slowly build up your forecasting toolkit from there. And look, no app or forecast is perfect, but when you layer a few sources together with your own weather reading skills, you build a much clearer picture of what's coming. More importantly, you start noticing early when something doesn't feel right. Conditions shift, forecasts miss things, and that's exactly when your ability to read the landscape and make quick decisions truly kicks in. And remember that Western Arthur's trip I was talking about? Well, the official forecast said clear skies, but noticing the clouds and the wind early allowed us to prepare for rain before it hit. That's precisely what we'll cover in the next video. How to stay sharp when things don't go according to plan, and exactly what to do when the unexpected strikes. And if you wanna see how the rest of that trip went, then check out this video up here where you can watch the full account of that little journey.